We are trying to run a business here and we cannot wait around for inefficient people. You know what's happening while you're shuffling through the office? You are throwing money out of the window and we cannot afford that. We work too hard here and our budget is razor thin. And these expense reports are the final straw. Sprinkles, you're fired. You can't. I, I've worked here for 250 years. Oh, Come on, Sprinkles. Get your hands off me. Up you go. <laughs> Calm oh, down, you little guy. Stop your flailing. And out oh. you go. Ugh, they don't pay me enough to handle these performance reviews and the nerve to bring up that he's young. Ugh, these millennial elves. Thank goodness we're done. I am absolutely starving. What food do we have around here? Would you care for a peppermint pretzel or a... Candy cane? No, I do not want a candy cane. I'm going down to the deli for lunch. Actually, ma'am, we have one more. What? Who? Santa. Ugh, I cannot with him today. Do you want me to reschedule? No, it's fine. Just send him in. She's ready to see you now. Santa, how are you doing? Recovering from Christmas? Oh, what a wonderful Christmas it was. It, it reminded me of Christmas back in 1952. You know that here... Okay, when I okay, was, okay, oh, okay. Me? Uh, no, I was just trying to make small talk. Here's the oh. deal. Um, I met with the snowboard, Mr. Narwhal, the head elf, Ned, who works on the sled, Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donner, and Blitzen, Mixie, Trixie, Tinsel, Ginger, Baby, Sporty, Scary, and Posh Spice, the CEO of Macy's, Veronica and Bevins, Mariah, Bing, oh. Perry, Buble, Frank, Nat, Dean, Jean, Stevie, Whitney, Tony, Dolly, oh Carrie, my. Rosemary, Irving, Jose, and Darlene, and we all agree, it's time for you to go. What? What? Yeah. You've had a good run. We appreciate your hard work. Yada, yada, yada. Oh. You're fired. Uh, Maple has your final check at the front desk. Donner, will you call down to the deli? You just can't fire me like that. I'm head of the president of operations at the North Pole. I can fire anyone I want. I've been here since the fourth century. You deserve retirement. Pick up some new hobbies. You could start running, travel, I don't know, take your wife somewhere tropical. Well, I don't want to. Excuse me? No. Yes. I, I, I want to take my wife somewhere tropical, obviously. But this, this, this is my job. Listen, my... I didn't want to say this, but as you might know, this past year has not been your best. Uh, this is about hitting Rudolph with my truck last year. I'm sorry it turned out not to be him. Yes, but you had a live press conference about it for the whole world to see. But, you know, it's not just that. Well, well, then what, what, what is it? Many different things. Oh, well, like what? For one, the elves. What about the elves? We are getting a lot of complaints from the Union about the elves being overworked. You know, when we started this thing 1,600 years ago, there were only about 80 million children in the world, and now we're up to 2 billion kids. That's a lot of work. Plus, most of our elves are pushing 700 years old and retiring, and due to global warming, the unions are forcing us to pump cold air into the warehouses. So now we're having to beg the states to allow us to run a pipeline from Alaska, and that's getting held up in Congress. Who knows when or if that will happen. Well, you could always just call them. Absolutely not. We will not be calling them at all. Well, we could find a solution. I will talk to the Union. I just had a ginger snap, butter scorch, and, and uh, cannoli over to the house the other night. Yes, I know. I was there, remember? Oh, that's right. Um, but I can meet with them again. It's not just the elves. We have been getting calls from PETA since your little press oh, conference yeah. last year. They replaced all of the sugar with salt last week, and now we're having to flush the candy workshop, which will set us behind. Oh, we can just order candy from Amazon this year. Ah, which brings us to another issue. These millennial parents are giving their kids literally everything they want, and Amazon is taking all of our business. Besides, they deliver 365 days a year, and uh, you deliver we once can a year. Bump that up a bit uh, to uh, twice a year? Hmm? Really? There are more Amazon warehouses than churches in the Bible Belt. Not to mention how many calories the reindeer are burning on the way from up here in the North Pole, the most isolated place in the world to where people actually live. I'm sorry. This is just the way it has to be. But, but, but what's, what about the children? They'll be fine. They have more than they need. 
But the children need me. Do they, though? I mean, I think so. You had a good run. You should be proud of yourself, and my but decision I... is final. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, what are you going to do next? I, I, uh, hadn't really thought about it. You thought about Florida? Well, it does seem nice down there. Ah, then Florida it is. Donner. Yes, Mrs. Claus. Will you book us two tickets to Miami? Yes, Mrs. Claus. We're listening to the radio station where the hosts of heaven sing. Turn your radio on. Turn your radio on. And if you feel them good vibrations coming from the joy his love can bring, turn your radio on. Turn your radio on. Turn your radio on. And listen to the music in the air. Turn your radio on. And the glory share. Turn your lights down low. And listen to the master's radio. Get in touch with God. And turn your radio on. Come on. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Better Late Than Never Christmas episode of the Main Street Music Show. We've got a jolly show for you featuring music from Josh Bissell making his Main Street Music Show debut. The Main Street players are here, Jamie Cloutier and Daniel Cross. Today's show is brought to you by Pete's Delete the Meat Feast, as well as Vieux Sach Fatigue. Stick around, enjoy the show. Turn your radio on and listen to the music in the air. Turn your radio on and your glory share. Turn your lights down low and listen to the master's radio. Get in touch with God. Turn your radio on. Get in touch with God. Turn your radio on. Get in touch with God. Turn your radio on. Hello, hello, hello. This is your old friend Claudette from Love Your Shock Fatigue. It's like <laughs> December 20 something, which means Christmas is right around the corner. <coughs> At least I think so. And Tom? <coughs> and Tom? Uh, oui, madame. When is Christmas this year? It is on the 25th of December, just as it was last year. Why do they keep moving it around? These Americans just leap from one thing to the next. Mm. When you find something that works like a bag of macarons, you stick with it. Anyways, if you are <coughs> looking for a special holiday gift for all your little brats in your loud American families, Said we have everything you need that love you suck fatigue. <laughs> That's right. Our store is stocked with authentic French Christmas decorations. Bush de Noël. Hand carved crush from our limousine region. <laughs> Some traditional shoes that you can leave by the fireplace for Santa to fill with goodies. Oh, I just love those little shoes toasting by the fireplace with the sweet chocolates and candies. Oh, Christmas is such a beautiful time of year. And don't! Raton de la cuisine. Pardon? Raton de la cuisine maintenant. Oui, oui. <laughs> Where was I? <laughs> We have all of the authentic French Christmas traditions. Oh, here is a customer now. Bonjour. <coughs> Welcome to Live Your Sock Fatigue. May I interest you in sweets from La Maison du Chocolat? Or possibly some French bread baked with Le Moulin de Goose traditional with flour? <coughs> or how about a money? <laughs> that uh, sounds real good. But, um, but actually, I'm just uh, <laughs> I'm looking for something with the Eiffel Tower on it. My daughter, she really likes Paris. So I want to get her something just really French, you know? You have come to the right place. Oh. Give your daughter a push de Noël, a missile 
Oh, and one of our fine wines made from grapes crushed by <laughs> strong French women. Oh, huh. well, uh... Well, she's 11, um, so I, I, don't, I don't think those last two things would be appropriate, but uh, I do like the idea of a, of a Yule log. Is that? It's not a Yule log. Is it? Oh. <laughs> a bush de Noël. Please do not insult my language. It is the most right. romantic language in the world. <laughs> I, I don't mean to insult you. I'm, I'm really just, <laughs> just looking for something with the Eiffel Tower on it. You are in luck. We have... Ah. Raoul Dufy's original painting entitled La oh. Tour Eiffel. Well, that is a that's a good-looking painting. How how much for y- y- y'all selling that for? Um, be a who look really good in a room, I think. Oh, she's got pink walls. Sir, <coughs> this painting shall not reside in a girl's room, but shall be the centerpiece of your home gallery. For all to admire. Yeah, uh, we don't we don't have one of those uh, gallery, but but I'm sure we'd find somewhere to put it. Uh, how, how much for it? Two hundred forty-seven thousand euros. Oh, uh, how how much is that in American money? I don't know. More than you have. Oh, um, well that's that's a lot for that. Yes, was that? Why did you insult me? Oh, no, I, I didn't mean to. I'm, I'm sorry, I was, just, I was just, just looking for some napkins or, like, a mug. You know, a mug with the Eiffel Tower on it. That, that That's all. How dare you? Rock out of my store. Really? Well, well, look, I was just trying get to out, figure out what... Out, oh, all right, okay, cake. All right, all right, all right. All right. I didn't, didn't mean anything by it. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you know what? We are closing for Christmas and Tone. Uh, oui, madame? Lock the door. We are closing. Grab the macarons. We are <laughs> staying in for Christmas. Oh, <laughs> uh, pardon, uh, madame. Uh, could we watch uh, Ratatouille? You know, oh. I, I love that little mouse. Uh. Oui, we will watch Ratatouille. <laughs> 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 Dear Mom, I just wanted to let you know that I will not be coming home for Christmas. And no, it doesn't have anything to do with you blowing up at me on Thanksgiving. And yes, I still like my tongue ring. The real reason is that I met someone. He is great. I'm not sure what his real name is, but he goes by Nitro. That's what his bandmates call him. My roommate invited me to this concert near my dorm, and I saw Nitro playing drums and knew that he was the one. Nitro ascending out of that drum set and into my arms. Anyway, when you know, you know. So we got matching tattoos the next day. You're going to love Nitro, but... That's why I can't make it to Christmas, because I am helping his band on the road by selling his merch. They don't really have any tour dates set up, they are just going to book them when they get to different towns. I think we're in Sheboygan, S-H-E-B-O-Y-G-A-N, right now. This tour is supposed to be like six months, but don't worry about me missing classes this spring. I'm putting my pre-med degree on hold to focus on Nitro's work. His band is really good and they're going to be big soon. The lead singer, Angus's cousin, has a friend in Nashville who waited on a producer last week. So, it's just a matter of time. Don't worry about sending me any money. I don't believe in it anymore. Our currency is seashells, pomegranate seeds, and love. Speaking of, I am now vegan. So I wouldn't be able to eat anything at Christmas dinner. I'm thinking about giving up on eating plants. It turns out they have feelings too. Thank you for sending me the red sweater, but I returned it because wearing colors is insensitive to colorblind people. So, 
I took the money and invested it in our new cause, which seeks to remove all manhole covers until they change the name to Humankind Hole Covers. Anyway, I need to go feed the ten pit bulls and six chinchillas that we're fostering. Send my love to dad, your daughter, Ocean Indigo. P.S. I changed my name because Margaret just didn't fit my vibe. Well, we sure do hope you're enjoying this better late than never Christmas episode of the Main Street Music Show. You know, we did a Christmas episode last year. So if you want to see that or any of our previous episodes, you can always find us on Spotify or you can go to our website at MainStreetMusicShow.com. We're also on Instagram and TikTok, Facebook at Main ST Music Show, Main ST Music Show. And we're also on YouTube. You could search Main Street Music Show or Main ST Music Show on YouTube as well. All right, enough of that. Let's get back to the show. <sighs> Finally, the kids are asleep. Oh, a little extra oof. wired. Yeah. All the excitement of Christmas Day, you know? And the chocolate. <laughs> oh, yeah. The chocolate. <laughs> here. Come sit over here with me. <laughs> oh. So, how was your Christmas? It was good. Good. How was yours? It was nice. Hmm. You don't sound too excited. No, no. It was it was nice. Uh, Christmas as an adult is just different than when you're a child. I know. I was watching Charlie open his bike, and I was thinking about when I got my first bike. I think I was eight or nine. <laughs> yeah? It was pink and white with pink streamers or, or frills on the handles. What do you call those things? Um, uh, Tassels. Maybe. Yeah, whatever they are. I had to put like 50 miles on that bike in the first few days. <laughs> Did you put a baseball card in it? A baseball card? Yeah, you know, that like flipped in the spokes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My brother put it on. Uh, I had Frank Thomas on mine. He uh, he played for the White Sox in the 90s. Huh, that was the year I broke my arm. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm, yep, I slipped on ice. It must have been black ice because I didn't see it and... Right on my left arm. Oof. I had to learn to write with my right for three months. <laughs> I didn't know that either. Can you still write with your right hand? Uh, only my name, but it <laughs> looks terrible. I try sometimes when I'm tired in the office. It doesn't work. Ah, uh, special skills. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> what about you? What's a Christmas memory that you fondly remember? I have two that are really vivid. Hmm. Uh, they happen in consecutive years, actually. Ah, but. I don't want to bore you with that story. Come on, please. Oh, it's, it's embarrassing. Come on, Kevin. I told you about my broken arm. <laughs> ah, I was just true. a klutz walking on ice. Please, please. Okay, okay, okay. I can't say no to you. I think it was 1990. We would have been how old? Um, 1990? I guess yeah. seven or eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was eight. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I don't know, me and, me and my family didn't get along at all. They used to drive me crazy. I remember a few days before Christmas, we were eating pizza. My brother was giving me a hard time, so I yelled at him. We got into a little scuffle. My mom got so mad because all my cousins were there too, so she sent me to bed early, which was fine. I didn't want to see them anyway. Aw, that's so sad. Nah, it's fine. I got mad. And I told him I didn't want to see them. Ever again. All this crazy kid stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the next morning I woke up and they were gone. Oh, that's funny. No, oh, no, seriously, they were gone. Really? That must have been scary. Nah, it was great. Had the whole place to myself. Could go through my brother's stuff, and I did. Mm -hmm. Eat all the food I wanted, you know, watch this really scary movie. That does sound like every eight-year-old's dream. Yeah. I even threw a little party with some mannequins and a, a Michael Jordan poster. Oh, how fun. But, I mean, really, you must have gotten scared. Nah. After the party, I realized there were two guys stalking the house. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Apparently, they'd been breaking into a bunch of houses in the neighborhood, and they knew my family was gone. How did they know? No, oh, because they had a 
trip to Paris planned. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I thought you said your family just disappeared. Oh, huh, yeah, that's what I thought. You didn't realize they were going to Paris? That's kind of a big deal. Well, I mean, that is why all my cousins were in town in the first place. Where was your mother? Uh, well, with the rest of the family. Your mother, Kate, got all the way to London before she realized that she left you? Paris. Whatever! I cannot believe this. To think we let them babysit our kids. Oh, she didn't do it on purpose. She just forgot. You forget to put on deodorant or to pack a toothbrush. You don't forget a child when you're flying to Paris. She only did it the one time. Oh, well, I would hope so. Well, that is until New York in the next year. What? That was fine. I was fine. Well, I mean, except for the... Except for what? I shouldn't have said anything. Uh, no, too late. You tell me right now. Well, but... Okay, fine. Fine. So there were these guys. Okay. And they were trying to break into the house. <laughs> But you just called the cops and waited for your family to get back from Madrid? Are you even listening Paris? Whatever! What? No, I actually didn't call the cops. Uh, I thought it would be a lot more fun to defend my house. Fun? Yeah. So what does defend mean? I set up a bunch of booby traps in the house. Why in the world would you not pick up the phone and call the police? Tell them that your house is being robbed and that your family left you. I don't know. I think I panicked. So, your state of panicking is setting up a couple of traps to when you're being stalked and robbed? Eh, it's more than a couple traps. Like how many? Oh, uh, well, for Harry, uh, there wait, were... Wait, you know them by name? Maybe. Anyway, Harry, <sighs> let me see, I, uh... I shot him in the face with a BB gun, then made him give himself third-degree burns on his right hand, branded a, a letter M into it, burned his head with a blowtorch, ah, covered him in glue, feathered him, made him fall down the stairs, hit him in the face with a paint can, tripped him up with with wire, and that, that knocked him out, convinced his partner then to hit him in the stomach with a crowbar, <laughs> pushed him out of a treehouse, and had an old man hit him in the head with a shovel. Oh. The sound it made. Oh, and then Marv, the other guy. Um, see, him, I, I also shot with a BB gun. Uh, forehead, actually. That's where I got him. Um, hit him in the face with an iron. Had him step on a nail. Oh, oh, oh and, and uh, broken uh, ornaments, right? Um, also hit him in the face with a paint can. Um, venomous tarantula on his face. Also pushed him out of the treehouse. Also got him clobbered by that same old guy with a shovel. What kind of animal are you? Hmm. That was a long time ago. Good job, Kevin. You what? ruined Christmas. Where are you going? To, to... I don't even know who you are anymore. Oh, don't use the back door, dear. Ah! <sighs> Three Christmas memories. <laughs> and welcome back to the show. You know, it wouldn't be Christmas without my distant cousins, very distant cousins, Ruby and Kenny making a visit to town and telling us a little bit about their Christmas traditions. Welcome to the show. Well, hi there. Thank you for having us back on the big show. We're just tickled to death to be here. Say hi, Kenny. Huh? Say hi. To who? To him, Kenny. This is Pearl's boy. Uh, the doctor? The other one. Oh, yeah, that one. Don't say it like that. He can hear you. Uh, anyway, the holidays are coming, and our listeners would love to hear about some old-fashioned traditions that you all have. Oh, it's not called the holidays. It's called Christmas. Sorry, yes, Christmas. Get it right. Oh, don't worry about him. The engine's running, but ain't nobody driving. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anywho, we like to go out to the Piggly Wiggly and pick up a nice ham. One of those good Virginia hams. Salty ones. They know what a Virginia ham is, hey, Kenny. Get yourself plenty of water, because that thing will dry you out something Now, fierce. who's telling this story? Hmm? Uh. We get ourselves a Virginia ham and sometimes some oysters and those oyster crackers. Get it, love those oyster crackers. Yep, sure do. Then we head back up the mountain and eat. And that's it? 
Yeah, that's about all the energy we got these days. Sometimes if we're feeling extra special, we'll get some Vienna sausages with potatoes, mm-hmm. but probably not this year. Mm-hmm. Just uh, two times. Uh, do, you, do you get a tree or decorate the house? Or uh, we any- haven't gotten a Christmas tree since 98. This one threw out his back, holding it to the car, and has never let me forget it. You can't get a real tree in October. It'll be dead by Christmas and burn the whole house down. Well, then why don't we get one of them plastic trees? I am not going to spend money for a piece of plastic that looks like a tree that I could just cut down out back. Well, you haven't cut one since before the Y2K. Oh, I've been busy. Doing what? All kinds of stuff. I'm, I'm so far over my head, I have, I have to look up to see the bottom. The only thing you're doing is looking for sundown and payday. Ruben, I tell you what, I, I. All right, okay, okay, all right. So, what, what about let's let's talk about family? Do you do you invite the kids over, the grandkids? What do you, you do for that? We only got the two. Tucker and his woman don't celebrate Christmas no more. She huh. got him doing yoga now, so they got some kind of yoga commune thing they go to during Christmas. I tell crazier you what, I didn't think I'd ever see the day where grown men would be wearing them short shorts and stretching like. You know, like that. I just don't know what to do with all that. Oh, see, that's what happens when you don't make him eat good as a kid. He has some kind of awakening, and now we're having to look at him. He's talking about Tucker's lady friend. She's a vegan, and now he's stopped eating meat. See, I'll tell you what. A man who doesn't eat meat shouldn't be called a man. See, that there, that, that there is a sin. Who, then Wyatt is still living in the basement, so we'll fix him a plate that he can eat between those video games he plays. I just don't know where we went wrong. Kenny, they are just fine. Are they, Ruby? Are they fine? You forgot to tell them about our other holiday tradition where you cry for about two hours about how you failed our kids and then won't come out of your room until New Year's. Kenny, I swear. Well, you do. You gotta be like me. Just accept that you failed a couple times. And turn on the ball game. <laughs> I've just failed as a mother. The no. one thing I was put all this art to do, and I couldn't get it right. Hey, look, 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 look what you just did. Look what you gonna made her do. Oh, it's not even Chris's already. She, she's already falling apart. Come all here, right. Well, thank Ruby. you, Ruby and Kenny Mullins. Thank you for being on the show, and happy holidays hey. to you. Hey, it's Christmas. <laughs> yep. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. All right. Thank you so much. Let's. Yeah, I hope it's a little bit better this year. All right. Let's get back to the show. Thank you. Bernice, what are you doing? You're supposed to be watching the front desk. I was. Then what are you doing out here? Well, I don't know the conversion rate from shekels to talents, and we ran out of towels in room 27. I carved the conversion rate out on the tablet for you. You did carve it on a tablet for me, which was one of the things that fell off the desk and had to be swept up. But are there still people at the front desk? Yeah. Well, then one of us needs to be up there. We can't both be back here guarding the barn. I don't know why we're guarding this barn to begin with. We should be guarding the inn. You know, there are all kinds of people coming back to Bethlehem for this census, and there's a reason why we made them leave in the first place. Which is exactly why you need to be back here watching the door. Oh, come on, they'll be fine. Let me go find some of the towels, too, anyway. Are you out of your mind? What? You cannot leave these two teenagers out here in the barn by themselves. Who cares? They're married. That's not what I'm talking about. Don't even act like you don't know. We don't have room at the end. What am I supposed to do? Oh, you let Eli, Perez, and Hezekiah's son have a room, but you make these two kids, Mary and Joseph, stay out in a barn. Well, it was better than staying out in the street like a bum. If I rode a donkey or whatever, 144 kilometers when I was nine months pregnant, would you make me stay in a barn? What's a kilometer? That is not the point. Listen, Bernice, honey, dear, they are fine. They are peacefully resting. She gave birth two hours ago. And I hope she didn't scare the goats. Oh, you're going to be sleeping in a barn for a very oh, long time if you keep I? up that kind of attitude. Listen, I am just trying to run a business here. It's the best I could do. Now let's go get those towels, huh? No, oh, I can just hear people talking about how we made a baby sleep in a wooden trough. It is not wooden, it is concrete. Are they going to... Uh, are they going to say it's wooden? Huh? Are they? Are they? They have plenty of straw in there. It's not that bad. 
Yeah, but it's pitch black dark in there. Oh, I gave him some candles. What do you want? Straw and fire. Oh, really? The kid some credit. He got his wife 144 kilograms all the Kilometers. way. Kilometers. Whatever it is. All the way from Nazareth to Bethlehem on a donkey. I'm sure he can manage one candle. Was it a donkey? All I'm saying is that uh, you excuse can't... Excuse me. Uh, we're talking here? Uh, Forget the candle. It's freezing cold out here. What is it? December 25th? What's a December? Huh? Where are you coming up with these words from? <clears throat> Excuse me. For crying out loud, what? We are three men in search of a baby. We have been led to this humble establishment. Have you seen this child? Humble? Establishment? Uh, settle down. Who's asking? It is I, Gaspar, with my traveling companions, Melchior and Balthazar. We were told something miraculous has happened here, and there is a new king. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you know where you are right now? Do you need some water or something? Don't give him any of our water. Yes, we are looking for the birth of our king. I mean, he's clearly dehydrated or Listen, something. I, I, I got this, I got this. Look, I do not like your type hanging around my inn talking nonsense. We were told he was born in this dilapidated shed. Dilap... Dilapidated... Shed? Bernice, he is pushing all of my buttons. All right, all right, settle down. Gosh, uh, what do you have in those satchels? Some herbs, spices, and... Go, uh, nothing you'd be interested in. You know, I, um, uh, I think we're early. Balthazar, Melchior, check it. Uh, yes, yes, we are early. We'll, we'll come back in the next uh, couple of weeks or months. Maybe the three years. Uh, come on, let us go. Yeah, you come on back later, huh? Yeah, we'll be waiting for you. Why do you have to be like that? Like what? Get over yourself! Get over myself! I, I just want to run a hotel. Bernice, will you please get back to the front desk before we get taken for everything else we've got? And you're making our customers sleep out in the barn? Look, they did not call ahead. If they would have phoned me, I would have found a room for them. They just showed up on my doorstep. With a donkey. Show some compassion. Compassion? You heard me. Show some compassion. Show well, then exactly, Berenice. Should I show some compassion? Give me that shovel and I'll show you. Oh, well, I like that. For the love of you, you stop the beating of the drum. Um, they told me a newborn king to see. Our finest gifts we bring to lay before the king. Kid, will you lay off the drum, please? There was a baby trying to sleep in here. Yeah, 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 wait, 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 wait. What, uh, what kind of gifts did you bring? I have no gift to bring. But you just said you had a gift, kid. Um, shall I play for you? Uh, nope. We're uh, going. Uh, go on back to the parents. Uh, Run along. Oh, okay. There you go. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. I'm pretty sure you're not in the story at all. Hey, wait, 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 wait. What, what, what story? Huh? You said story. What are you talking about? Forget about it. Okay. All right, fine. If you want to guard the shed, hmm, by all means. But I am trying to run a business. I can't afford to be distracted by these wise men, these drumming kids, and whatever else is going on. Like, I am going to go take care of the customers at the desk, get some fresh towels for room, uh... Room 27. Yeah, 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 room 27, and then I'll come back and guard the teenagers in the barn so you can get out of the cold. How does that sound, Bernice? That sounds fine. Okay. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna go. What? What in the world? Where, where did all these sheep just come from? Oh, I'm sorry. These are my sheep. I am their shepherd. You, you may call me Samuel. Samuel. 
Right. Will you and your 75 sheep please vacate my premises? It would be exactly 100 sheep. Uh, um, let me check. One, two, three, four. Might take a moment. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, ten, eight, ninety-nine. Oh. Uh, goodness, we seem to have lost a sheep. Um, uh, Obadiah? Yes? We have lost a sheep. Will you please find it? Yes. Thank you. Uh, may we enter? I'm sorry. This is private property. I understand, but, but, but you don't understand. No, I don't think you understand, pal. Oh, here we go again. Give me that shovel before you do something you'll regret. Listen, bud. I have my rights. A baby was born here tonight. Wait, 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 wait. How do you know? Well, an angel has spoken to us. An angel? What is wrong with the people in this town? You do not believe, but you will. Believe what? Well, we were visited, Obadiah and me, um, by an angel. And he said to us, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord, and this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. How did you know that? Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Have you seen him? The baby? Yes. Well, no. Yeah, we've, uh, we've been working. You know, we, we have guests. Well, then come. Do not fear. Let us, let us all go and see him together. How brightly shining it is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared in the soul felt its worth. The thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn for. that's going to do it for the better late than never christmas episode of the main street music show thank you so much to josh bissell for being a part 
of this year's Christmas broadcast. If you want to see more about Josh and some of our other musical guests that we've had in the past, you can visit our website at MainStreetMusicShow.com. Thank you to the Main Street players for being on the show, Jamie Cloutier and Daniel Cross. Today's show was written by Jay Corton and mixed by Allison Bolton. The theme song performed by Burlap and Ashes. Main Street Music Show is a Marari production. Thank you so much. We'll see you again soon. Merry Christmas and so long, everybody. Praise his name forever.